Did you know that the first female Peshmerga fighter was Assyrian and that her fight probably created the modern female guerrilla feminism among Kurds? Both Assyrian and Kurds have lived in the same area for ages and has throughout history become both enemies and allies in different conflicts. This has created a mixed relation between the two and in today's video we will talk about the relation between Kurds and Assyrians in the past, in the present and in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button in order to not miss future videos. Also do not miss our other relation videos and comment below which relation video you would like us to do in the future. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. The relationship between Kurds and Assyrians is quite complicated. Kurdish authorities in KRG and Rojava both claims and portraits their lands as a safe heaven for all minority groups despite their ethnicity and religious belonging. These claims are for good reasons, at least if we compare the minority conditions in the rest of the Middle East. However, local Sunni Arab politicians and minor Assyrian voices have accused Kurdish authorities of driving Assyrians out of their homes in different parts of Kurdish controlled areas. But let's start from scratch. The Assyrian people is an ethnic group indigenous to the Middle East. A vast majority of them belongs to Christianity and claims descent from Assyria, which is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. The people of Assyria has during the years been persecuted and forced to emigration due to several historical events during and after the First World War. In ancient times, Assyria at its height reached all the way to Egypt in the west and the Persian Gulf at the east. The empire therefore controlled not only Assyrian ethnicities but also other people who lived within Assyrian rule, not at least Kurds and Persians. Within time both Medes and Persians would revolt against Assyria and so the area would be part of many different empires, all from the Median Empire and the Persian Empire to the Parthian Empire and the most recent Ottoman Empire. Around 1299, the Ottoman Empire was formed. The empire was Turkish ruled and is today known as the last Islamic Caliphate. This caliphate would last until 1923 when it collapsed as an outcome of the First World War. The Ottoman Empire was huge and included areas claimed by Kurds as Kurdistan and Assyrians as former Assyria. In the reign of the Ottoman Empire, but especially in the reign of the last sultans, such as Sultan Abdul Hamid II, Mehmed V, Mehmed VI, and Abdul Majid II, some Kurds within Kurdish tribes had an important role inside the Ottoman elite, reaching high military and governor places within the empire. To understand why early clashes broke off between Assyrian and Kurds, one must look at the basics of the World War I. The war had two sides, divided between the Central Powers and the Allied Powers. While the Allied Powers was an alliance of many countries such as the British Empire, France, Russia, Italy, Japan and the United States, the Central Powers had the German Empire, Austro-Hungary, Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire. Now among millions of Kurds living within the Ottoman Empire, not all of them fought alongside the empire or even agreed with them. On the other hand, the Kurds fighting alongside the Ottomans were of irregular military, meaning that the Kurds who fought Assyrians were a smaller group of units not representing the official Kurdish question or their interests. Even if they thought they were, they only, only represented and served the Ottoman Empire and their long-term interests. 
So let's look at the facts in the beginning of 1920. The Kurds and the Assyrians lived together in mostly the same geographical area. They shared villages and cities, which leads to a fully natural competition between the Kurds and the Assyrians over lands and resources. Now in this competition, mainly in between Kurds and Assyrians, there were also other sides who were looking for the best of their interests. The British, who opposed the Ottomans, both during the World War but also after it, had Assyrians stand against the Ottomans with the promise of being politically rewarded afterwards. Simultaneously, the Kurds were promised the same political reward but from the Ottomans. Even though this might not be the perfect word for it, one may look at the situation as Assyrians being the British proxy units, while the Kurds were the Ottoman proxy units. What happened in this battle was that a lot of Assyrians died as they simply were inferior to Kurdish and Ottoman troops. Several massacres were taking place, but a hidden seed of friendship were grown between Kurds and Assyrians. Many civilian Kurds helped Armenians and Assyrians during the different Ottoman-led massacres carried out against them. Assyrians were either hidden in Kurdish homes, where Kurdish and Turkish cavalry in most cases didn't seek for people to kill, or they were just smuggled away by Kurds to safety. A fully natural act from the Kurds who had lived with the Assyrians for ages and during times naturally developed neighboring friendship with many of them. In areas where Kurds and Assyrians commonly lived, the Assyrian population were massacred by mostly Ottoman troops supported by some Kurdish and Chechenian irregular soldiers. The massacres took place in the same context as the ones against Armenian and Greek people in the area. Unlike the Armenians, there were no orders to deport Assyrians. In some cases, all men were executed in the cities while the women fled to Mosul. Many of these widows died on the way due to starvation and harsh conditions. The estimated number of deaths variates depending on which source you look at. While some sources claim a death number of 200,000, others claim 300,000. The first part of the genocide were located in Diyarbakir under the leadership of Turkish Rashid Bey. The first reports came in 1915 when reports claimed that Christian adults were massacred mainly in Diyarbakir but also around Mardin, Harput and Viranshe. The report claimed that the entire Assyrian population in Faish Kabur were killed alongside all the male Assyrians in Mardin. In Van, the situation started in 1914, where 71 Assyrian men were killed. However, it escalated in late 1915, when 8,000 Turkish soldiers ordered and executed the killing of 20,000 Assyrian civilians. Many people were killed until a resistance was formed. The Assyrian people in Tur Abdin heard about the first genocides of their people. They started to prepare themselves for a resistance. Their newly formed militia was led by Masud Mirza. Simultaneously, the Kurdish irregular forces were appointed to make a siege on the city. Hours of gun battles took place, ending in many casualties on both sides, but eventually an Assyrian victory which drove the Kurdish irregulars out. The irregulars, however, would make another try, and another three different attempts to take the city were taking place, all of them ending in Assyrian victory. Eventually, the Ottoman Empire decided to leave the Assyrians in Tur Abdin alone, and there was an estimated number of 1,000 deaths in the fight between the two sides. On 3rd of March 1918, the Ottoman army led by Shimko Shikak successfully assassinated the Assyrian leader Shimun Benyamin. 
In a revenge action, Assyrian forces attacked the Kurdish fortress of Shemkushikak. The Assyrian came out of the siege successfully and took over the fortress while Shimku escaped and fled. When the Ba'ath party took power in 1963, the country's political situation changed drastically, especially towards Kurds and Christians. Under a hardcore Arab nationalist state, the Kurds who had long cultivated their own national identity found themselves under assault. But the Assyrians, whose own national aspirations had been crushed by the massacres of the early 20th century, generally acquiesced to the Ba'ath regime and lived in relative peace. Nevertheless, the Kurds and Assyrians who still lived together would in many cases end up fighting together against the central Baghdad regime. In 1942, Margaret George Shelo was born close to Duhok. This Assyrian woman would grow up to eventually join the Kurdish Peshmerga forces in their fight against the Iraqi government in the 1960s. Margaret therefore became the very first woman within the Peshmerga. She most certainly placed the seed for today's women revolution within Kurdish forces in both Bashur and Rojava. Don't forget to like this video if you want a separate video where we only talk about Margaret Shelo and her fight with the Kurds against the Iraqi government. The situation in Iraq changed dramatically with the decline and fall of Saddam Hussein. The Kurds were able to establish the other Iraq, a generally secure area marked by toleration of ethnic and religious differences. In March 2010, the elected head of Neve government in Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan accused the Kurdish militias of forcing non-Muslims out of the Neve area. According to the accusation, this was made in order to easier make the area part of the Kurdistan regional government. The accusation towards KRG was sent to the UN in several points. Christians are persecuted, threatened, and arrested if they oppose Kurdish leaders or interests. The Neve government demands an international independence inquiry towards several attacks in and around Mosul. Who stood behind these accusations? One may think that it was Christians, the Assyrians maybe, or another Christian groups. However, the bloc largely contained Sunni Arabs loyal to Iraq. One may wonder if they only came up with such an accusation like this. Kurdish leaders deny the charges and claim that Al-Qaeda-aligned militias are to blame. The leader behind the accusation, Al-Nujayfi, had even according to US authorities a predetermined hostility towards Kurdish interests. This claim is mentioned in a Christian newspaper. So how can you believe a guy who have a predetermined perception about someone? According to an independent research, over a half million people found refugee in the Kurdish autonomous region of KRG. 20,000 of them were Christians, and a very large majority of these 20,000 Christians were Assyrians. The research also stresses that several Christians reached high positions in the Kurdish administration, and that the Kurdish government had been rebuilding churches and Christian villages. It also contends that the Kurdish government supports the establishment of a Christian autonomous zone, provided that it is created through democratic means and includes areas within the disputed territories in the Nineveh Plains. Kurdish authorities argue that any such area of Christian self-rule should fall within the territory of the KRG, forming in other words an autonomous region within a future Kurdish state. Today, within the 250,000 sized Peshmerga, there is several Assyrian groups fighting under Kurdish and Assyrian flags. The same thing goes for the YPG forces in Rojava, who has several wings of Assyrian troops within their army, one of them called Western Kurdistan's Assyrian Militia. The Nineveh Plain Protection Unit, probably the strongest Assyrian defense force right now, had its first militant cooperation with the Peshmerga in their common liberation of Tescopa in September 2016. 
Some Assyrians today have their own issues in not forgetting the massacres in the early 20th century, accusing all Kurds in the world as responsible for the massacres, even though it was a vast minority of the people who performed these horrible actions. Not even the Kurdish protection of Assyrian people and their churches during the reign of the Islamic State are convincing some people. However, the general relation between the Kurds and the Assyrians are looking good and is for the future looking better and better. What do you think? Are the Kurds and Assyrians allies? Comment your thoughts below and also your opinion of which relationship video you want us to do next.